So let's do document.getElement to get the snake itself. Element by snake ID by snake. So we we'll get snake snake. Yep. That gives us the snake. Wanna get the head of the snake, which is um, this part. Then I do snake head. And that should get us the snake head, but of course we need to be able to retrieve the first child. The first child here will give us the snake head. We we'll use query selector and we have snake div first child. Okay, then we need to worry about the rest of the body, the body, the snake body snake body because the, the body will follow the head anywhere it goes then we say everything that is not the head of course is the body mm, okay we've done we we are done with that but we are getting all you also want to be able to get the food Then we have this step thing and the idea is to, that's the kind of measurement we use to define how our item will be moving across board. By just using 2020 stepper, you can change it to something else, but that's what we're using. So we want to set the current snake location to be of course by default we are focusing on using absolute position to change the position of each of these elements and we are using top and left that's where we are using to denote how your item is moving across the game board so you also have the same thing defined for the food location so these stuffs you will be able to change on the fly Okay, so we want to do also the command Q or the command we are giving because once you give the command up left, bottom left, up right, left, down, as you give the command, you need to also be able to pass those command Q to the body so that the body will know where you are in the system. So we have command Q. So let's go ahead and start the game. Start game. So in the starting of the game, there are quite a lot of things we want to run. First of all, we want to randomly display the location of the food. So we need to write a function to do that random because we'll be doing that random in lot relocate food. So relocate food. So let's go ahead and write the function to relocate our food. So we want to use of course the floor mechanism or rather the uh, math random to move our food all about and the location is what we are going to be changing to determine what your food will denote so i'm going to be using some function to help me i'm going to use floor math floor and uh, math floor is to you know convert the value of what we have into a whole number so you can see the definition here and that returns greatest integer less than or equal to its numeric argument. So we have math as well. We want to do random and this random might depend on your screen board. For now I'm using 40. So because we didn't have a defined game board that will you know specify a kind of um range that we can pick so this is just me putting a random value there you need to specify something different depend on the screen that you're working with so i can say this should hold left and this should hold the right so i'm passing the same thing literally <laughs> so i can decide to say the food style dot left is equal to the food location or lock dot left that value should be set that way 
and the right should also be set this way and by so doing our item should be able to change location at will once the game starts the next thing we want to focus our attention to is when the document is loaded and that's where we need to add an event listener to the key up down and what have you that's the key down so that we can decide on what to do add event listener we're focusing on the key down then what should happen we want to change snake direction like where the snake is moving to that's the idea and once the direction is changing we can then decide if that's eating the food or not so let's go ahead and create that function so here we want to manage the events that you know would be triggered at some point so we can also have a place where we I want to you know target all the events that has been captured we are concerned with up right down and um, all the major angles that's arrow up arrow down arrow left arrow right so i can enforce a kind of command to make sure that those are the keys that has been that are being captured so how can i enforce that so i can say if i want to make sure that anything you put that does not contain um, these keys should not be treated so i can say if we have an array of arrow up so these are the possible combination of keys that are required for this our game so we have down arrow right and arrow left so if all these values that you have here must include must be included in the key that you are about to type in that's why we're gonna have dot include e dot key so it should return so look at the command look at what it says there it's not if it does not include that that particular function should just terminate there and don't bother to continue with the rest of the code else we want to be able to add to our command queue and what are we adding to the command queue we're adding the events or the key press which is the key and after that we want to also make sure to get the very first length of the whole thing we are doing and you're gonna see the reason why we are doing this because we've been able to detach the first snake from the rest of the body because we have the snake head and then we have the body so we want the body to always follow the head we are starting from the first thing we have here so if the length is equal to one meaning you are starting your application we want to move snake of course we need to go and write the code to move the snake on itself we are moving the snake moving the snake head is different from moving the snake body so this is like the moving the snake head so I can just say move snake head just to be explicit so let's go ahead and write the code to move this guy's head for some reason if the length of this guy is empty you should not allow this guy to go ahead So if this guy if this guy happens to be length of zero, if you don't have Q in our command, nothing to do, just don't work. <laughs> don't bother yourself. Let's go ahead with the next thing we have here. So we go to command and say command Q and we get the first item. We remove the first item of the array so i get the position of the snake snake position call it props to shorten our name in there so i get window get comp 
computed style then I have the snake head then I have the snake location dot left pass int snake props dot get the value we have some value we need to get we need to get the left and also the top those are the two things that we are concerned about as far as location is concerned for any of our elements that we'll be dealing with we are just focusing on the top and the left we'll use that to move our snake the way we want okay so let's now start checking our command long last so we switch on the command and we'll be checking a couple of things so let's start with arrow up let's see what we have we can do snake location dot top then we'll have shorthand here so this is like a shorthand you can implement this or you also implement the long form anyone that seems easy for you to implement so we can as well do something like this so anyone that seems so easy for you to read will be good so we can go ahead and implement every other ones I just duplicate this and here we have the down obviously the down has to do with the plus we have the left the left has the left here and we have the right this happens to be positive the next thing we need to do is to apply these our changes to the body of the snake or the head of the snake so we have the snake head the style the left is equal to this guy plus pixels we repeat the same thing but this time around we also specify the top and this should be working now so the head is moving so what about the body let's make the body follows the head so we can create a function here and say move snake body so let's go ahead and write the code to move the body of the snake function move snake body um, yeah let's do this way okay so what do we want to worry ourselves about here we want to get the previous location of the head right we need to get the previous location of the head and uh, how do you get the how do you get that you can do let's previous location equal to all the information inside here snake location what you set here gives you a copy of what you have inside this place the next thing you want to do is to start going through your snake body for each item that you have in your snake body what do you want to do with it you have quite a lot of things who want to be able to do but let me just put this out here so first of all you want to hold the item itself you want to make some changes to the item and you want to be able to know the index of where we are then we are using this function to be able to we are using this function we're going to be writing some code inside here and finally we close our function so this is like a arrow function which one you want you they uh, made fit of course you can write your function this way and um, jettison this arrow function and it also look this way so anyone that you are comfortable with you can make use of it so moving on we then have let our item props as well because we need to get the position of each of the item to be able to move them around 
so we have the use the normal window gets computed value or the style style of what of the item remember the item is here for us to make use of then you can set the new location is equal to you have the left part of it and the left part is I'm gonna be passing integer of the current item prop dot get property value not priority value what value am i getting i'm getting the left getting the top so now that i have the top i then want to be able to change the item style to reflect what is happening so we have the left set to a previous dot location dot left then we set this to the top as well then our new location our previous location now becomes our new location so we can see that it's kind of working the way we expect it to work of course it's not supposed to be going back and forth but we can remove that in our code to make sure it doesn't do that behavior so let's move on to the next thing that we have and the next thing is making sure that our snake can actually eat and where would that be captured after here we can have something that says can eat or should eat or eat or something so let's say eat food so how do we kind of know that it should be able to eat and that's pretty simple we are using the head to denote that so the head location is here which is location head the food location is also you know captured which is done randomly so each time we eat a food we can reset that so let's go ahead and see how we can eat the food so we have our food where is it here again yeah eat food so let's create our function to eat a food so we can say can eat food and um what next do we need to do remember we're checking we have our check-ins we are checking the snake head so we didn't call it snake head but say we just say snake the head is the whole body so we're comparing the left part of it to be equal to the food location also left so that is set uh, but we're not done we also need to check the snake top so that gives it you know a location in space <laughs> not time and space but just space for now top is also equal to food food location the top so if that is true for some reason what should happen we have quite a lot of things that we want to set to happen we need to also be able to create new elements inside here and add to what is going on here right remember we have all these things happening here so if you create new item it should be extended by default we only have it extended up to two items yeah one two i think three items also so this okay the third one is the third white one the first one is the green second one is the second white the third one is the third white so once you create this if you do it manually it won't be added because the position will not be set automatically it then depend on our code here to help us set that location so let's go ahead and see if we eat food what should happen to it so we say the new body parts <laughs> that we're about to add <laughs> should be equal to we're creating new elements guys so we're creating new elements what is the element we're creating we're creating a div and we should appear that body part to our snake so snake 
dot append child what child are we appending this guy okay so after we must have done that i'm sure our food will get fatter now or our snake will get fatter now and we can then worry about relocating the food we've implemented some rights somewhere which have messed up again so we have left and we must have specified right somewhere okay so that's it so here should be top and here should be top okay so we should have that our inner HTML set to this part and we should be able to eat our food like so but yeah we need to figure out what to do next with our new added elements so our image our food needs to be redirected we need to redirect our food relocate our food and then expand what we have there so our new item is created what is put is added at the bottom there so it needs to add itself to the queue that we have our snake yeah is eating but our item or our new body is being generated somewhere else <laughs> it's generated somewhere else so it needs to be able to know that it needs to follow the body so one of the issue is that we are getting all the item here but this is generated on the fly so at the point of generating this we need to reset our snake body so this needs to be a let as opposed to be a constant because we are reusing all the body as at when we need it so we need to reinitialize this body or the snake body we need to reinitialize it at the point where we create or when we eat the food successfully so at this point where that must have been done and we've created the new item guess what we need to make sure that the snake body is added to all the items that we've just the new item that we've been created so once we move to the next thing our snake will be able to grow so let's give it a try so if we go and eat this up you will notice that even though our new item is being created here if you try to move forward again now it will now be able to add that number of snake to it or part of the snake body to it so the same thing happens here it knows that your snake needs to feed and then this will continue to generate until you are tired of playing the game so that's your snake guys the next thing for us to do is to add a timer to it in the sense that we need to add a stop interval so that this continue going on its own continuously we don't have to keep our hand on the button because what we are doing now is we are constantly pressing the forward the arrow button to make this work so again there's also no way for us to detect if there's a collision or if we hit if we hit the wall at some point the system just goes all the way those part of the control can be handled by you guys i can't do everything for you guys so you should also venture into it and see how you can make it happen to have all those controls in it but let me kind of set the intervals and then you get to see how the set interval works with this set the direction or set yeah more like setting the direction and also make it automatic to be moving by itself if we you know want to use the sets interval um yeah so let's give it a try so we have the current direction is not specified Mm, you can even say right current direction is move right as arrow right like that's where 
the game should be moving towards to. Then we can specify by default. Okay, don't let me start setting the interval now, else the game will just be going by default without it having control of where it should stop. But another thing again I discover is we need to avoid you know entering itself the game able to do this kind of gymnastics even though it looks nice to be able to go that but snakes doesn't snake don't have that kind of maneuverability or the game itself doesn't allow you to maneuver in that um, form so what we can do is to create a kind of condition here to say if the e dot key I'm gonna make in quite a lot of conditions is equal to arrow up and remember the current direction is what you're gonna be using now to know what it is that you've pressed or what where the current snake is um, pushing towards or your last command arrow down so you shouldn't be able to do up and down at the same time that's what this is saying if you have this condition or we have something similar i'm going to show you similar stuffs so this is one direction so if you have this direction you shouldn't allow this direction or try direction looks awkward when you have arrow down and arrow up then we have the opposite one which is left and right and right and left then we have the right and we do left i'm gonna remove this one so what what then happen what happens next if you have all these guys you should return you should just return meaning you should terminate this function that's what this part cater to then the other part we are jumping towards is to also specify our current direction so instead of us moving the snake we just set the current direction you will see where uh, this part will play in a moment so we're not setting it manually by clicking you know we want to set it so that we can let the set interval determine where it should go to then the key becomes our value so we still have other places we need to go and check or we need to go and make adjustment to we also want to make sure that we also want to make another condition here so at this part where we've set it to be zero it's not enough we also need to know the current direction so if the current direction has a value it should keep moving else it should return because you might not have a queue but you might have a current direction to go to so current direction what should then happen we can push into the queue the value else you can then do your return okay what else do we need to push here i think we are good with all these other props other future we have here we need to make sure that the command here is captured as our current direction of what to do okay we've eaten food everything is done here let's set the interval and see what then happen the interval will be set at where at the beginning of the game move snakehead bye you can see the guy is already running <laughs> so now it, that's also still fast but that's fine that's fine so if the game starts it won't give us any minutes to even think but let's see 5000 so by default it has um, a position which it moves so once you change the location it change direction and this can be used to also define how hard the game can be in the future like how fast it can go so you can use the game speed to determine that so you can call this game speed and you can make that a constant and do that to 100 then 
this one even though we default it to do right we can do now so that the game will not move until it receives our first command so in that case we can say move forward and then the game is moving forward so we now have our snake game kind of so I notice that a little bit of lag there when it generates the the new body the new body is generated on screen what i can do is to generate the new body off screen and we don't have that lag there okay so how do you generate the new body off screen so one of the easy way to do that is just to set you can set the property when you create it where is the new body move body uh, after we eat you can set the property new body path dot style dot left the top as well as zero or you can set it to minus to go away from the screen so that anything that happens it's not going to show so let's give it a try so watch out for where it normally shows you will see that you don't see it anymore so that way you take it off the screen and then you can focus on enjoying your game then you can set it that immediately i, I won't do game over you guys can go and work on game over when the uh this guy goes off screen you should be able to set that in your game but what we've done in this game is to make it very simple you guys can implement anything you want to implement on your own platform so let's go over the code again and see anything that looks kind of out of the ordinary <laughs> 